Hello and welcome everyone to the Engineers Ireland uh, webinar on personal branding. Um, just to say today we're absolutely delighted with the speakers we have coming up and this is the first part of um, a series that explores um, early career engineering graduates from all different disciplines and backgrounds and um, the approaches that they take to early career personal branding. Um, so yeah, let's get into the webinar. Uh, if you have any questions about it, my contact details are mgallagher at engineersireland.ie. So yeah, I'm really delighted to have two excellent speakers uh, this evening. Um, Eve Cassidy is a UL, an UL graduate um, who was recently featured in the Silicon Republic article talking about why women in engineering need to be more visible. Uh, so really excited that Eve is going to be our first speaker of the evening. Um, and we're also joined by Daniel Shigalu. Uh, Daniel is a, a 2016 graduate from uh, Covenant University in Nigeria, uh, but he's also a 2019 graduate from TU Dublin in, um, with a Master's of uh, Energy Engineering. And uh, even looking here, it's interesting how Daniel uses his own kind of personal brand on his LinkedIn to promote the sustainable development goals. For those who are tuning into the recording, just to say that this is just one video of a whole series. There's a channel on YouTube that touches on them all. Um, but there's loads of things like whether it's exploring different careers, like whether it's about mentorship in your engineering career or a career in energy engineering. There's loads of stuff up there and that's where all our live events go. For anyone who's joining us on the video to say there's free student membership, the link is in the description. It's a really great resource to take uh, advantage of while you're still studying in college. And for graduates, there's uh, amazing savings to be made if you're graduating and you've been a student member. All you need to do is log into your membership profile and in the year of your graduation, the little button there saying becoming a full member will become available. So great way to save 700 quid in your first four years of your careers. And um, yeah, my contact details are there if you have any questions about it. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, I'm absolutely delighted to hand things over to our first speaker of the evening. Um, Eve Casty uh, is a graduate from the University of Limerick in civil engineering. And uh, as you can see by this holding slide here, a uh, very kind of prominent role within the Kirby Group Engineering. So Eve, I'll hand it over to you if you'd like to speak to today's topic. Super, thanks Michael, or Michal. Um, I just uh, do a quick introduction of myself. Um, I'm 24, I, as Michael Michal said, uh, I graduated in uh, 2019 from UL um, in civil engineering. And uh, I have been working for Kirby Group for the last year and a half. Um, uh, just to start off, um, I chose this career just because I always had such an interest in uh, structures and buildings and that kind of thing just fascinated me when I was when I was younger and uh, I kind of was very driven to choose this career and I didn't have any doubts um, along the way and um, I what I want to get across as well in this talk today is just to get more girls and constantly promote women in a in this industry and like it's it's not a taboo or a, it, we shouldn't be considered uh, different in this day and age. Um, so uh, like when I was in college, there was a very small proportion of girls to, to boys. There was like, I think three girls in our graduating class and 30 boys. So like the ratio was 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 quite low. Um, when I talk about like other graduates and stuff, what I, what I want to get out of this is I can say all day that uh, we want girls in schools to get promotion and for them to see um, a, a kind of a, a role model figure um, for engineers and, and not to be afraid to choose a career. But at the end of the day, um, I think that it's our responsibility to have the voice and uh, to, to, to promote women and uh, not to consider it a different a different career. Um, I. I, I just think that uh, w within that, um, I think that f from now, like and when these schools are back open again, we need to go into schools and we need to target kids and just get them put get the thought in their mind that it's not a it's not a career that we can't pursue. And there's no difference in this day and age to me or all the men I work with every day. Um, for example, like for, for me, I don't even notice anymore that I'd be only in contact with men all the time. And, and still, I think from 
from when I graduated and I know people in college still like they there still hasn't been a, a full change and like there's still a lot of it's definitely male dominated still and I just think we need to we need to keep keep the momentum going and just get a, a, a voice out there um uh, and we need to get the, the conversation going to get more girls um in this career um I think girls as well at the moment <laughs> social media and stuff is such a judgmental place to be and it can be really positive for us to to promote stuff but also I think that uh, there's not enough um, role models for young girls and there can be a lot of pressure for them to choose a very straightforward or a standard career path when they just haven't seen um, women and like for, for me like I never I never had somebody to look up to or to see in the industry and like to have a goal even um it, it was very hard so I think that we need to keep putting it out there and just constantly trying to get um more girls out there because it, look it, it it's a career that anyone can do and we shouldn't uh, at this day and age have any sort of a an imbalance anymore um and as well just for graduates um I think that you know getting your LinkedIn profile set up and getting your contacts out and and as well now because we can't talk to people in person and we're not going into the workplace and stuff it is so much harder to build a, a relationship with peers and even just to put yourself out there to get a job so I think that the more the more you can do on that sort of a platform and get the word out there and like as well connect with people and ask people questions and for me like I would take anyone's questions any day to, to just to try and help them and like as well with the graduates like I think at this point you've obviously decided on your career path but for for future generations we need to keep um promoting this kind of a career and how how normal it is for for a girl or a boy um to to, to do it um and as well with the LinkedIn as well you need to be putting out there what you're passionate about what you, what you want from your job and what you want from your company and um just to like get a, a visibility and put the word out there and like it, I think um it's it's really really important um other than that I don't really have too much too much else um I don't know Mike Army Hall do you want me to divulge in anything else um really well what we can do is um like having, I think that was an excellent introduction. Even like one thing definitely was striking from uh, for me, and and uh, listening to you is around the um, the still the existing kind of um, imbalance in the engineering profession uh, between men and women, and uh, yeah, just that um, like also that really valuable part that you're doing in terms of um, uh, pushing yourself uh, out there as a young woman in engineering and kind of like. Um, uh, like making that a part of your personal brand um but uh i guess one thing i was going to ask you um about was like within your graduate program or in kirby group your day-to-day -day, for mm. your personal brand like what's it been like since the last year with the pandemic like a lot of things seem to have gone more online and is there any challenges yeah. associated with that or is that something that comes quite naturally to you i guess would be a it, question i'd love to ask it, you initially um when we first started working from home and stuff for me it was very hard to have any sort of motivation to do anything and like it's a it's it's really hard to adjust from working in a workplace and having your designated working hours and like that's the place you go to work but when you are stuck at home and and your home and work life effectively becomes the same thing like you you can't escape it it can be very hard to like create a, a balance and, and and also at the same time get out and like not be constantly thinking about work and like it's it's uh it has been quite difficult but once I've kind of uh I got used to it like working from home now I I think it's great like I I know myself what my workload is and how I can um allocate my time and uh I think as well for a graduate going out there into the workplace when you are, aren't meeting people and you're just working from home from the get-go that can be so intimidating and like very difficult uh to, to build relationships but I think people are always willing to talk and like if a new person is joining your company to just reach out and 
put put it out there that you, you'll chat them through anything and like it could be very small things but like it's a it's so helpful to have like a friend out there within your company that you can reach out to um for some support you know brilliant that was absolutely fantastic um i think you raised so many excellent points and uh, things that kind of be uh, taken away for either the final years of the graduates who, who are tuning in this evening um, for their own careers. Um, the, is there anything else you want to add before I kind of hand it over to Daniel? No, I don't think so. I'd say let Daniel fire away and we can... Oh, okay, then... Uh, any uh, questions uh, as well, I'll, I'll be happy to help. Well, we can... Um, we can revisit this at the questions and answers uh, session. But yeah, I, Eve, I just want to say thank you very much for a really fantastic introduction to the talk. And um, I'm now delighted to hand the floor over to uh, Daniel Shigalu. And uh, Daniel, I know you might have slides or you might be sharing your screen. And um, actually, perhaps I might need to stop my sc screen share while I'm doing that. Um, but just to say a few words about Daniel while he's getting that ready. Um, like. Daniel is someone who kind of begun his engineering career uh, over in Nigeria and um, I guess when he came to Ireland to do a master's in energy engineering like one thing that was uh, really striking about like as soon as he arrived at TU Dublin is he really used his uh, personal brand to kind of go out and to win an election for the postgraduate uh, student officer and to do another one later on but I'll hand it over to Daniel now and just say uh, really excited to hear all about you. Hello everyone, hi. Um, thank you for having me here today, Michal, and thank you, Eve, for setting that floor so good. Um, that was a very nice presentation by you. Um, hi, everyone. Um, like me, all I said, I'm Daniel Shigalu. I'm happy to be here to present this few very short slides um, on personal branding to you. Um, I'll just go ahead and um, introduce myself. Um, like me, all said, um, I'm an engineer, I'm a mechanical engineer, as well as um, an energy engineer. Um, I graduated um, from mechanical engineering in Covenant University back in Nigeria in 2016. Um, I moved to, to Ireland in September 2018 for my master's degree in energy management. Um, just to be on that, like I said, um, I did mechanical engineering as my first degree. I actually did that in DIT, that was what it was back then, my master's, and um, currently TU Dublin. I actually applied to UL, um, Limerick, and I didn't get that. Um, but, you know, great experiences that I've had here in Ireland um, from going to TU Dublin. Um, so, you know, right off the boat, I got here in September 2018 for my master's. Um, lovely environment, lovely people. I was so glad to be part of TU Dublin, DIT. I keep doing that. Um, and... You know, I got to meet people, got to meet Mio. Mio was, as at that time, working with DIT Students Union. And um, upon my arrival, they were having a by-election for a postgraduate officer, you know, walked into Mio and kind of encouraged me to run for the role. And as someone who is, despite my love for engineering, um, like I had Eve say how she's been, she was so interested in structures right, right from childhood. I myself from... The very tender age of 10, I already started dismantling machines. You know, back in Nigeria, we use a lot of generators um, because of power issues. So, you know, I just go fix generators, you know. As I just dismantle it and don't know how to couple it back. But it was that eagerness, you know, just wanting to know more um, how this works. I think that kind of what made me go for engineering. And I've loved it all the way. Um, but aside my engineering passion, I have also like to, you know, Leadership, I've, like leadership has been a major thing for me, you know, just wanting to be out there representing people, you know, talking to people. And uh, I think that's kind of what pushed me into running for um, the election DIT. Um, so I first ran to be a postgraduate officer. Um, and it was also kind of the eagerness to channel, you know, improve my profile, trying to meet more people. I'm in a new environment. I just don't want to be a passerby. Like, I want to know how things work here. I want to be involved, be engaged. What can I learn? What can I take back home? What can I take back to my community? What can I learn? What's working here that I can take? And I think it's the same mindset we should have and put into everything we we, we get involved with. So I was elected postgraduate officer and like everyone was like, who's this guy? Um, I did that um, and, you know, also while studying for my master, 
my master's, I ran for a full-time sabbatical role um, in TU Dublin, because that was when we became TU Dublin back in January 2019. And um, I was also elected the first vice president for education of the new TU Dublin Student Senior, but that was for City Campus, which used to be DIT. And, um, and it was an interesting one because and it was a sabbatical role and was easier with the postgraduate officer role because that was just for postgraduates and as a postgrad as a postgrad i could reach out to like you know 500 to 1000 postgrad students we had um in the university but for the sabbatical role it was the entire dit it was an insane leap for me because i'm like first of all there are so many barriers i just got into this country you know this is a role that's going to be decided by you know, over 25,000 students who have been in this school for the past three years, and you just came, you're barely one year into this country and you want to run for your sabbatical role. Um, and if anyone knows DIT, we had campus, we have campuses around the city, you know, I had to go from Bolton Street to Kevin Street to Angel Street, you know, meeting so many people. But I kind of just realized that, you know, I think the passion was there, I was really interested in it. Um, you know, I just wanted to make a change, um, kind of had some personal issues with my program where I, while I was in college. And I think that kind of spawned me on as well to see like, you know, and I was a class rep, so I made some changes by being the class rep. So I felt like if I could make this little changes by being a class rep, you know, this is a system that works. Um, you know, I can imagine so much I could do being the vice president for education. Long story short, I ran and I won. And, um, you know, I had a fantastic year. I met so many people, you know, achieved so many feats. Um, nominated for International Student of the Year um, for the USI Awards, Education Officer of the Year, and all of that. But I think, you know, takeaway from that was, you know, it was the willingness to just put myself out there and, you know, see how I went and what I could achieve from being in this role and what I could learn and improve myself and what I could also bring into the engineering role and engineering career for myself. So. Um, I also did that. I finished my energy management degree, my master's. That was a tough one because I had to juggle between running the full-time role and um, completing my thesis. Um, but I did that and eventually I became a member of Engineers Ireland. So I'll just stop talking about myself now and move on to the reason why we're here today. Um, so basically, we're talking about personal branding. And I must say, because it's... It's it it's meant so much in this area we're in. You know, it's um, we've all met, we've all happened to meet ourselves in a place we didn't think would be two years ago. Um, if we were told we we're going to be in this situation two years ago, so you'll probably just laugh it off and think I was insane for saying that. But we've met ourselves here, and we've all had to adapt, and it's just constantly evolving. Like or the, the things we're getting used to, we're trying to adjust to in this past couple of months um, has been you know remarkable. So. Personal branding basically is simply how you promote yourself. It's a unique combination of your skills, your experience, and the personality that you want the world to see you for. Um, it's, you know, you acquire the educational skills, you acquire um, non-curricular skills from your activities, your engagements in um, the community and um, your day-to-day -day life, and your personality, the kind of person you are. And it's the combination of all of this together to bring your brand, who you are, um, it's telling your story and how it reflects your conduct, your behavior, both spoken and unspoken words, and your attitude. It's how you want to differentiate yourself from other people. Um, like some of you may be aware, you know, some of you are fresh graduates and, um, you know, some of you in final year thinking of, you know, what's going to happen next, what next for me. And, um, you know, the competitive economy we have right now, you know, the labor market is so competitive. And, um, there's so many engineering graduates right now. I'm sure you will testify of that because you know we have so many engineering students and graduates. But you know, the essence of this is to make yourself stand out. You know, what's in Eve that's not in Daniel, what's in Daniel that's not Eve, what's in Miho that's not Daniel. And um, you know, it's being able to bring all of that, your skills, your personal skills, your personal attributes, you know, what you've learned along the line, what you've gained, both in your academics and outside of your academics, and bringing it all together to be portrayed. So it's a combination of how you want people to look at you in real life, how the media portrays you. Um, I don't know if anyone here has tried to ever Google their, their names on um, Google and see what comes up. So I think, you know, our digital footprints right now are very, very, very important. 
So I'll move on to the next slide is why would you want to have a personal brand? Why should you have a personal brand? Socrates said this over 2,400 years ago. The way you want to gain a good reputation is to endeavor to be what you desire to appear. And today, personal branding has never been more important. You know, your personal brand can be vital to you professionally. It can be vital to how you prevent, present yourself, both to your current and potential companies or employers. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean even if you're looking for a job, whether you're in a job, you may, be, you may be looking to, you know, switch roles, you may be looking for a promotion, you know, it's how you want to present yourself. You know, you can happen to stomp upon the executive of a big company, which just happens to stop upon your profile. And um, you're just like, oh, this is good. You know, because the essence of this is to have your profile speak for you when you can't speak for yourself because before they meet you, they meet your profile. And that says a lot. Um, it's, it gives a lot of, um, pre, it preempts a lot of decisions about you even before they meet you. So it gives you the opportunity to ensure people see you the way you want them to see you instead of some discretion or, or, or seeing in some possible harmful way you don't want to be seen. It gives you the opportunity also to highlight your strengths, your passions that may not be seen in your degree, may not be seen, be seen on your CV. You know, everyone has a CV. Yes, you may have a very good and strong um, results um, degree. Yes, you have a first class, you have a second class upper. But we have so many first class, we have so many second class uppers. What's distinct in you? Why should we prefer you? Why should we pick you over the other person? So this is the essence of this personal branding. So basically, tips for creating an effective personal brand for an engineer. First of all, in order to do this, you need to have a personal reflection and analysis of yourself. You know, what are the qualities that differentiates you from the other colleagues in your office, in your class, among your fellow graduates? You know, what standouts? What have you learned along the line? What skills did you pick up? What attributes did you pick up along the line, uh, along your academic years? You know, what did you engage in? What co-curricular activities do you engage with? Even as an engineer, you probably, let's say you were probably um, a debater. You, you were part of the debating society. You were part of um, the football team. You know, that's, that's the ski, that, that's, you know, from being a footballer, you, you, you acquire a lot of skills that you probably wouldn't even acquire from the classroom. You know, you acquired patience, perseverance, you know, you're, you're training so hard, consistency. Yes, we all read some mathematics, we all design drawings and all of that from being engineers. But these are the side attributes, the side skills you pick up along the line that, that interests your employers, that interests you know, people that are looking into you that, oh, yes, you know, is um, an energy engineer, is a mechanical engineer. She's a civil engineer, but she also deals with this. You know, she has more skills. She has better skills. So consider what your strengths are, you know, what are you known for, you know, around your class, around your office, you know, along, around previous employment. You know, are you a great collaborator? Are you an innovator? Do you solve problems? You know, are you always keen to, are you, do you have a listening ear? Like that's, that's even a skill, you know, it's uh, as, as funny as that may sound, you know, do people, are people always willing to talk to you? Do they know you all have, you always have something good to say, you know, do you encourage people, you know, how good are you with projects? So, you know, another way to, to do is ask people what they think of you, you know, ask your close friends, ask your allies what they think of you and take some time to reflect and know what comes to mind and, um, you know, not all of this down because it will help you in, in developing and building this profile. So secondly, identify the right channels to promote your personal brand. This is so, so crucial because, you know, we're in the current age because everything has gone online. There's so many platforms, there's so many, so many avenues you can, you can um, engage with. Um, but, you know, if the key thing is identifying the right channels. You know, it's just not enough to have your brand identity on a paper, you must show employers that you also have a special ability or distinctive outlook. You know, utilize social media platforms to promote yourself. You have LinkedIn, you have Twitter, Facebook, you know, more particularly LinkedIn because it's kind of a big force right now. You know, you know, don't just, if you're looking into, you know, creating your LinkedIn profile, improving it, making it look better, you know, don't look to just putting in your job title or your, graduate role or your graduate, you know, graduate of this, you know, look, look for ways to make it look nicer, you know, write a short summary, explaining what types of goals you've completed, you've achieved, you know, like I mentioned earlier, 
you know, what have you engaged with? Have you engaged in charity events? You know, put those things there. You know, it may seem funny because you're like, you may think, you know, I've thought of this one way before, like I'm an engineer, like no engineering company will be interested in why did I engage in a charity event? You know, it's, you know, little things like that we think is not important, but they are actually important because, you know, that kind of tells them more about the kind of person you are and they want to engage with you more. They want to know the kind of person you are more. Um, so utilize your LinkedIn platforms, you know, put in these profiles, you know, don't just have an incomplete profile. Make sure you put in a professional picture, um, make sure you're putting Put it in short notes about you know things you've engaged with if you've walked somewhere put in a short note underneath it you know i did this in you know, your achievements your you know, things you've achieved in those places you know make it look good make it look like someone you want to engage with and um the other very important points i will be concluding with is be clear consistent and coherent you know it's it's easy to have so many platforms you know, you want to be on LinkedIn, you want to be on Twitter, you want to be on Facebook, you know, I don't know if a lot of people engage with that anymore, but you know, it's good to have a consistent picture around these platforms, you know, make sure your bios are similar, you know, you can try to tweak it around each of them to suit um, the audience there, but you know, make sure they kind of see the same person, make it easily recognizable once they see that, oh, yes, this is this person. Not I saw an engineer here, I'm seeing a DJ here, you know, it's make sure, if you're an engineer and a DJ, put it together, put it, it's, it's, that's cool. Like for me, that's cool. You know, you probably want to solve engineering problems in the office and uh, you call, call on this guy, Miho is there and you probably need some music in the office. You know, you guys want to kind of relax a bit, call Miho as well. And, you know, puts the tunes in. And uh, so like, you know, put this, like everyone wants to see this. I know possibly for me, it could be very tricky as well. And for, I don't know if I have people who could testify to that as well, when it comes to actually putting yourself out there, especially on these platforms, you know, part of me, like uh, prior to a couple of this year and a couple of years back, I still struggle with it. You know, you might not be comfortable putting so much about you, you know, so much in, about what you're doing, but try to kind of find a balance, you know, you know, make sure you put in what really matters. You know, you probably, you know, there's a kind of, trend now where you see people on LinkedIn, you know, for every um, achievement, for every meeting they attend, for every um, course they attend, they're putting it all on LinkedIn. Like I was here, I was this, I was this. But if you're not comfortable with that, find a balance, you know, you could do a summary, you know, a monthly summary, a weekly summary, you know, did this, did this, achieved this, glad. You know, it's just making sure you're still putting the things that matter and people know more about you. Um, so use the same photo, like I said, for all your social media profiles, publish posts and tweets in line with the image you want to transmit about yourself. Um, like for me, like I'm big on mechanical engineering, I'm big on sustainable energy, sustainable engineering, renewable energy. Um, you see on my header um, when Mio displayed it, um, I'm also a big fan of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, you know, lead to things like that. You could just you know, pick those things up and just post about it. Um, you don't need to write the pieces about it. Um, big fan of what um, Eve said as well. Um, you know, gender balance, you know, it's all part of the sustainable development goals, but trying to make sure there's a gender balance, you know, we want more women in, in the industry, you know, like you said, you know, we're trying to encourage more girls, but there are lack of role models. I had that same issue as well back home where, you know, you're seeing successful people, but uh, you don't really see how they got there or you're not seeing it. So you can't really put them as models because you, you don't see, you know, it's not traceable and you want to make sure you have traceable, like traceable achievements um, for, for the girls and um, for the gender balance. I kind of personally, for me, I know we have so many wonderful women in engineering right now. They're still paving the way, you know, they're breaking barriers. They're trying to like, you know, get, break out prejudices and, you know, and they're doing great work. So it's still, you know, and the thing is for every little thing, bro, achieving so much, you may think it's not working, but it's all part of the big picture. So in whatever way you're doing, whatever you're doing, make sure you're still putting your effort out there, putting yourself out there and trying to participate in everything you have a passion with, your interests, your strengths, put it out there, engage with people who have similar um, goals with you, similar achievements and, you know, build this effective personal brand. 
And on that note, I will just um, say thank you for listening. God, me and my God. I hope I got that. I haven't used my Cooper fork in a while. <laughs> thank super, you very much. That was super, Daniel. Thank you so much. And uh, I think there is like a lot of uh, takeaways there and that. I'm really excited now to move into the questions and uh, answers uh, segment. Um, so I am actually going to stop the recording there, but just on the record one last time, I want to say a massive thank you to both Daniel Shigalu and Eve Cassidy for two really enlightening talks on the topic of personal branding for both uh, students and graduates. Um, so.